this this algorithm and we're going to see some other applications of suffix trees and then we can move on to um, range minimum theories and um, and um, lowest common ancestors okay right so so essentially what was the algorithm that we had here right so so we had this table uh, we had this this idea of storing uh, big K bits on each node, right? So each node had one bit for every different kind of string that existed in our generalized suffix tree, okay? So, so, but the idea that I said yesterday is that this is actually time. So we don't really want to spend this much space, okay? So let's just sum up the, the steps that we want to, to our algorithm to do, right? So first, okay, so the first thing to do is to build, okay, this is important because we want to make sure that our algorithm really takes this, okay? So we need to build the generalized suffix tree, okay, suffix tree for all the strings, right? For, for the strings that we have from S1 to S big K, right? So this S big. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, to say how much time each of these operations takes. So this one takes, um, so essentially we saw that we can build suffix trees in linear time, which when it's a generalized suffix tree is essentially the same thing. You just have to add up the size of all the strings, right? Okay, so that's this. Right. All right, so, so now for our second, um, for our second step. Okay, so the idea that we want to store this um, table of bits, okay? Uh, this is more like conceptual. In practice, what you can do is you can iterate for each different string, okay? You can basically identify the nodes that are part um, of its suffix tree, right? So, so that's basically it, right? So for each one of the SI strings, okay? traverse the whole tree, okay? So for each one of them, I traverse the whole tree and I identify the nodes that have that, um, that have leaves of that type, okay? Traverse the tree, the whole tree. Three, okay, and do uh, CV plus plus, right? So CV is this value that's storing the number of bits set to one. So it, uh, so we can start to obtain these these values. We can start some counters that you start at zero. Okay, so for each traverse the whole tree and do CV plus plus. Okay, for each node V, each node V. Okay, that is. Um, known to have uh, a, a descendant leaf leaf of string si uh, si right. So basically, for each string, you with you you can start from the roots, go down to the leaves, okay, and then you identify the leaves, and if the leaves are si, then you uh, when you move back up, you just add one to all the nodes that are of type SI. For the, node, for, the, for the nodes that don't have any leaf of type SI below, um, then you don't increase, right? Okay, so that's basically it. Okay, so second step. Right, so this, this step is the step that takes most of the time, right? So this step does take, because I ran this for all the strings, this step does take n1 plus n2 
plus nk. Right? Okay, so this is the, the step that takes most of your time, right? Because you have to do this k over here. But notice that uh, it doesn't have a k in space, right? So, but space is uh, simply the size of the, of the strings, right? Because what I'm doing is at each node, I'm just storing a counter. I'm not really storing the table, right? So the, the table is more like conceptual. So I'm just storing a counter, okay? So third step. Traverse, traverse the tree again, okay? But this time it's only one time, right? So it's for, it's not for all the strings. So it's just the, the okay? Um, and at each step, step, replace, Okay, so now what am I going to replace? I'm going to replace, okay, the information that I have on this table, okay? So remember here that I have LK, right? Okay, so, so what am I going to replace? So, so I'm going to replace LCV, right? So basically I'm at a node, I read the number CV, which is the number of bits set to one, and I replace the value that I have for L for that number of bits set to one by, um, by the string depth, string depth of node uh, V, okay? If, uh, this is larger than the previous value that you had for LCV, okay? If this increases the value LCV, right? So basically what I want you guys to do is you need to build this table L, okay? Which is basically what you're going to print in the output of the project. Um, and you, you can init the, the table at zero, right? So basically, you can initialize the, the table at zero, right? So L uh, K equals zero for LK, right? Um, and then what you do is at each node that you are at, right? You now have these CV values, okay? And you go to your table and if the string depth of the node that you're at is larger than the value that's stored in the L table, then you basically increase it, okay? And there, and if you do this, okay, so let's do this here in our example, right? So if I did this, right, so I had this example over here, uh, there exists some generalized suffix tree, right? And if I did this at this point, my table wouldn't be exactly the way it is right here. My table would be like this, right? Why? Okay, uh, well, maybe not like this really because I'm not sure if there are other substrings that occur in three of them uh, that are larger, that are, that are of size three, but I don't think so. Okay, but there's definitely there are strings that occur in three of them. Uh, let me see. Right, so, N is actually one of those strings. So basically this could actually be like a two or something like that, right? Okay, right. The problem is that the number over here could be either a zero or it could be a two, but it might not be a three. So everybody got this problem? Okay, I'm not guaranteed to get the right number over here because since the, um, the string of size three actually occurs in four of them, the only value that I changed was this one, right? So the string of size three occurs in four of them. It doesn't occur in three of them, right? So the value that I have here um, might actually be smaller, which basically means that I do, I need to do a last pass where I uh, bottom up, 
check if this value is actually smaller than the three, then um, I need to replace this value by three. Basically, that's it. So was this more or less clear? Okay, it's, it's not very clear because we don't have the tree, right? Because it would re be really hard to, to do the suffix tree of, of, the, of all these trees, right? But, but the idea is that um, this value, say, so after step three, this value might actually not be the correct one, right? So we need to do a last pass where you, where you bottom up check if that happens, you need to replace this two by a three. Okay, All right. So we're going to check that um, as you do the the project, right? So um, for every k small k less than big k uh, starting uh, right. So for every k starting at big K and um, less than one, one, okay, check if um, uh, actually less than two, right? check if LK minus one is actually smaller than LK, in which case, case replace LK plus one by LK, right? So basically you, you need to do this final cleaning up um, step, right? Uh, but this is actually, okay, so I didn't say the time. So this is like a traverse. Um, this is a traverse the three steps. So this basically takes the size of the tree, right? So N1 plus NK and BK. So this takes N BK time, right? And uh, this actually takes just K time, right? So this takes BK time, right? So this is just a scan. You just scan your table. Right, so in total, um, so the total, total here is total um, O of big K N1 plus NK big K time, okay, and um, O of N1 plus NK space, right? Okay, so this is the algorithm that we wanted to do uh, and actually the one that you're going to do for your project, okay? All right, so this is one of the applications of suffix trees. Um, let me, let me look at some other, um, applications right so we have a another application over here which is um, so right okay so i was seeing if we can illustrate this here so i'll, I'll illustrate it and um so we're going to do the next application of suffix trees. Okay, so this is application 7.7, .7, uh, building a direct, a smaller direct graph for exact matching. Okay, building a smaller direct, directed graph for exact matching. Okay, so this is basically just an observation about suffix trees, right? Uh, I don't actually want you guys to do this, but um, but let's look at it. It's um, informing, right? So look at, look at this suffix tree, right? So if we were to draw suffix links, okay, 
So let me just draw a suffix link here. Okay. Um, so one that I'm interested in is this suffix link, right? So if I draw the suffix link from this node, I will get to that node over there, right? Is this clear, right? So the definition of suffix link, no, wait, no, not on this one. Uh, no, wait, this one is not. Wait, so on this one, I actually would go there. Uh, wait, wait, wait. All right, so no, the suffix link for this one would actually be to this node over here, in which case it's not really interesting for my application. Okay, if I can find another one. Right, no, so I have to draw another suffix tree. So I'll draw another one, right? Okay, okay so. So let's draw a suffix tree. So we have a string here, right? So suppose that I have this string, um, x, y, x, a, x, a, x, a. Okay, suppose that I have this string, I need a dollar there. Um, so the suffix tree for this string uh, would be the following, right? So you would have, X, right? And then uh, Y, X, A, X, A, and X, A, right? Then you, okay, so here you'd have an A, and here you would also have an A, right? And now you would have a dollar and here you have an XA. Yeah, is there a question? Okay, now you have another XA. Uh, so here's the dollar, right? So here's the dollar. Okay, uh, so here's the same thing. Okay, so some of you guys that have been drawing suffix trees might already have noticed this, right? This is a dollar. Uh, that suffix trees can look very self-similar, right? So this is like an extreme example over here where you can see that these trees are exactly the same, right? So I still need a, another link here, uh, another edge, XA, 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 dollar, right? So this one, and we still need a dollar there, right? So here, if I draw a suffix link, so this is the one that I want to draw. Here, if I draw a suffix link, it goes like this. Right, here's my suffix link. And actually, if I draw this one, uh, right. Okay, so this is, okay, sorry. Uh, I had a lot of work yesterday, so sorry. Uh, right, so in this direction, the same thing here, right? Right, so here's another suffix link, right? Uh, and what these two suffix links are doing, and they point uh, to the same subtree, is basically showing you that this subtree over here, right? So this subtree and this subtree, they're exactly equal, right? So they're, they're isomorphic, right? They're exactly the same. They're, the only difference that they have is the suffix that they represent, right? So for example, uh, so if I number the suffixes over here, right? So this would be suffix number one, number two, um, where is number three? So number three, okay? And then number four, okay? And then number five, and then number six, and then number seven, then number eight, and then number nine. Right? Okay, so you, you can basically see by the numbers here, so what's happening? So the trees are exactly identical. They have the same structure as a tree. They have the same labels. So the, the same edge labels, they're the same. Uh, the only difference is that if you look at the um, suffix indexes, the indexes are always plus one, right? So this, this leaf over here corresponds to that leaf over there and three plus one gives you four. 
So this leaf over here corresponds to that one. So five plus one gives you six. Okay, so basically that's the, the idea. Um, all right, and uh, if we have this information, it basically means that we don't have to store these, both of these subtrees. We can basically just store one of them. And that's what they mean by, by, um, by, um, by a DAG, right? So basically what I can do is I can come here at this node, right? And I can basically point, put a pointer, right? Okay, I can basically put a pointer there. So let me just, okay. I can label this pointer by A, okay? Because it's the letter that I would use if I were to descend, okay? Um, and I can basically trim away this subtree, right? So if I do this, okay? The only thing, <clears throat> the only thing you need to do is that you need to do plus one Right, so if I do this pointer and instead of going down the tree, if I go through this pointer, I get to a structure which is exactly equal to the, to the structure that I want to have, except that every leaf that I come across, okay, if I want to get the real value instead of reading the value that's stored there, I basically have to subtract one, right? So, so if I go down my tree, right, uh, not go down the tree, but if I go through this red edge uh, and then I reach this leaf six, okay? Uh, if I was on this tree, instead of reading six, I would be reading five. So that's basically the idea, okay? So this is a, so, so, <clears throat> so the main question here is how to identify when this happens, right? So what are the conditions that are necessary for this to happen, right? So we, we've seen over here that this doesn't always happen, happen when you have suffix links. Like for example, over here, if I add the suffix link that I wanted to add, but this time add the correct one, right? So if I add the correct suffix link over here, right? This is no longer the case, right? So here I have a subtree, which is basically two leaves, right? These two leaves. Uh, but here I have an internal node, right? Uh, and we have more descendants and stuff, right? So, so we need to identify the conditions that, uh, that are necessary for this isomorphism to occur, right? Um, and the conditions are pretty simple, okay? So this, this tree is isomorphic to that one if there is a suffix link, right? And the number of leaves is the same. Right, so that's the only condition, right? Right, so this is actually here on here. Uh, 7.7.5. Okay. Um, hey, sir. Yeah. For a big alphabet, does this happen frequently enough so that it is uh, useful? For a big alphabet? Uh, I think it's more likely to happen, right? Uh, because as soon as you go through one of the letters, okay? So what happens for a big alphabet, right? So if you're thinking in a random situation, then probably nothing will happen. But if you think that you have a big alphabet, but pairs of letters occur frequently together, like if you think about English, right? When you write the, right? The T and the DH, usually occur together, right? Um, so that means that if after a T there is always an H, which is not the case, but um, suppose that you have a string where, so that's basically what's happening here, right? So what's happening on this string? On this string, it's happening that after an X, you always have an A, right? Okay, uh, or at least, several times, right? So here you have an X with a Y, okay? But that basically goes down this branch, right? So this big branch, okay? But, but you do have X followed by A's lots of times, okay? And basically that means that um, the subtrees that start at the A's, right? Um, are the same that 
that if you had included an, an X before, right? So that's the reason why this is happening here, right? So if you have a big alphabet, but letters are not correlated, then probably not. But if there is letter correlation, right? If one letter is very likely to be uh, occurring after another one, right? Or put another way. So here in the X and A, all the A's appear after X's, right? Okay, so all the A's yes. appear, right? Um, and that means, and that's the reason why you have this isomorphism. Okay, so if all the A's appear after X's, then you have this isomorphism, right? So this is likely to occur if there is letter correlation, right? Uh, we can talk a bit, this, this then leads to another topic that we can talk about, which is data compression. Actually here in the book, they also talk about Limpulsive data compression and the Burris wheel of transform. And we basically will talk about that uh, because it's very useful for, for actually for these stru structures. But for now, let's start this, just this simple observation, okay? Um, okay, thank okay. you. You're welcome. Let me start fixed screen. Okay. Uh, if the number of leaves below node V is equal to the number of leaves below node uh, SV. Okay, so the node, the suffix link of V, right? So this is a suffix link, suffix link, right? Uh, then the two subtrees, uh, subtrees are isomorphic. Right, then the two subtrees are isomorphic. Uh, isomorphic. Okay. Yeah. Right, so they're basically the same tree, right? So, um, and so basically, if you use this, you can reduce the amount of space that you need for. Um, for storing your suffix tree, right? All right, so more applications of suffix trees that um, that we can see here in Gus field that might be interesting, okay? Um, okay, so the reverse role is something that's actually pretty important that we talked about briefly uh, when we talked about string matching, right? So, so I run that right. Reverse role of suffix trees. Okay, so what's the idea of the reverse role? So the idea is the reverse role. So the, the standard way, right? So the standard approach that we used for um, uh, string matching is to uh, index the text, okay, so create uh, the suffix tree, tree of the text, right, uh, and search for P in the tree, okay, right, so, so by the way, I, if I do this, I can search for any number of patterns, right? So, okay, so for PI in the tree. Okay, for, okay, for, every, for any number of patterns. Okay, so basically, um, yeah, pattern. Right, so, so I have several patterns. Uh, and I um, search them in the tree, right? So, so this is a bit more general than what we did for Knut Morris Pratt because for Knut Morris Pratt, you only searched for one pattern in the text, right? So this allows you to search for several patterns in the text, right? So, so the total time of this is uh, you basically need the time to build the suffix tree, 
right? So with, that's the size of your text, right? Uh, and then you need the, the, the time to search for each one of your patterns, right? So pattern one, pattern two, uh, up to pattern K, right? So if you, have, if you want to search for several patterns in your, in your text, uh, this is your time. Uh, the problem is that this is your space, right? So the, the problem is that your space is the whole tree, uh, the whole text, right? And if you're indexing text, right, text could be pretty big, like you could have gigabytes of text and you want to index them, right? Um, so it turns out that you can actually do the other way, you do this the other way. So what's the reverse rule? Okay, so the reverse rule uh, is, if you know a priori the patterns that you want to search for, um, uh, what you do is you build the generalized suffix tree for the patterns and then use the text to search over that tree, right? So the reverse rule is um, build the generalized suffix tree. for all the patterns, like P1 to PK. And, um, and basically uh, scan and basically use this suffix tree to, and basically try to read T on this suffix tree, okay? So the way that you try to read T on this suffix tree is the same way that we use to for using for determining the longest common subsequence, right? So basically, yeah, you you go down by letters, and if you're not able to go down, you basically follow suffix tree, okay? And then uh, use t to traverse, okay, the tree. Uh, in a similar way, in a similar way to the, okay, so basically the thing that we did for the longest common sequence. So, so essentially what you do is you're like simultaneously computing the longest common subsequence between T, your text, and all of your patterns, okay? If at some point this longest common subsequence becomes equal to the size of a pattern, then basically you have an occurrence. Right. Okay. And that's basically that's basically what I, what I was going to say next is when is this useful? Okay. Uh, well, this gives you the same time as before, right? So the same time that you took before. Uh, the advantage is that now your space becomes um, the, the patterns, right? Because um, you created the suffix tree for the patterns and not for the text, right? Uh, and this means that if this value, so if the size of the patterns is actually smaller than the size of the text, then this makes sense, right? So you can do this to save on space. Okay, but you only save on space if actually um, your text is actually larger than your pattern, right? And um, and this is actually similar to something that we didn't saw, but that you could use for Knut Morris Pratt, which was a generalization of Knut Morris Pratt, which was used to uh, search for several patterns at the same time. Okay, so this is similar. So th these performances, these uh, measures are similar to the aho Korasik algorithm, which is the generalization of the knut morris Pratt, right? Um, okay, which we didn't saw because at the time I said that, um, that this is, um, that we're going to see this application, which actually it's much simpler. So, so we didn't actually see the aho Korasik. okay? Okay, wait. Right, so this is the, the, the same performance that you get 
from Ahokar 6, right? Okay, which is, okay, so Ahokar 6 is 3.4.6, right? On guess field, right? So, so all of these are on guess field. All right, now more applications of 6, six three. Um, uh, uh, right, so we've got, we did the graph and, uh, okay, so we did, so this is 7.8. Okay, matching statistics. Matching statistics is, um, is similar to longest common substrings, but it's so like all common, longest common substrings. Let's do the next one, which is uh, a bit more interesting. Okay, right. So so let's do 7.10. Let's skip the, the previous ones, right? So this is another string problem and it's called the all pairs. Okay, this was actually a project one of the years. Uh, and I think it's a bit harder to implement than, than this year's project, but um, actually most of the, the, the challenge will be implementing the the accountant algorithm, right? So uh, the part of building the suffix tree. Uh, then the, um, the scanning the tree will actually be fairly straightforward, okay? Um, okay. Right, so what's the challenge here, right? So, these ones don't actually have an example. Okay, so I'll give you guys an example. So suppose you have a, a, pair, um, a sequence of strings, right? So you have S1, S2, S3, and so forth. Okay, uh, so basically, um, so basically this should have some letters, right? A, C, T, okay, I'll put A, C, T here, uh, T, A. Okay, so A, C, T, T. Okay, so I could put T, T, A here. And I could P, put T, A here. And I could put T, T, A here. Um, and A, C, that's cool, right? So suppose that I have these three strings, right? So this would be the first one, this would be the second one, this would be the third one, right? So now assume that I want to build um, a little table, right? So this actually will be a bi-dimensional table, right? Um, I'll put it over here. Okay, so I would have, so let's put, so I'll put one, two and three, okay, so one, two and three. Okay, now on this, on this vertical uh, column, I will we'll store suffixes, okay? And um, the horizontal will represent prefixes, okay? So because it's all pair, prefix, suffix, right? So prefix. Okay, and now what, what are the values that I want to store over here, right? So one one is actually not interesting, right? So these values are not, the diagonal is not interesting. Um, you can basically put the size of the strings here because they're simultaneously a prefix and suffix. Okay, I'm not counting the terminators um, as, suffixes. So basically, maybe I can take them out, then we'll use them for the tree, but that's fine. Uh, all right, so, so okay, so these values uh, on the diagonal are not interesting because they're basically the size of the string. So this one would be five. Okay, so this one would be five, this one would be five, and this one would be five. Okay, the other one, the, the other values are actually more interesting, right? So, so what is one, two, right? So what is the suffix of S1, okay? 
and also a prefix of S2, right? Which string is a suffix of S1 and a prefix of S2? TA. TA, okay? And it's not just any string, right? Because the empty string would be uh, one of those strings, right? But I want the largest string that is simultaneously a suffix of S1 and a prefix of S2, right? So here the, the answer would be two, right? Okay, so the values that I'm storing here are the values of the largest sub strings that are suffixes of the on the column and that are prefixes on the um, on the line, right? Okay, so okay, so largest. Okay, so basically this is storing size, and I'll just write it here, the size of the largest okay, suffix of S1, that is S2, that prefix of S2 is um, 2. Okay, right, uh, right, and I can do the same for all the other strings, right? So, which suffix of um, S one is actually a prefix of S three? Right, I don't actually see one. <laughs> no, I do, I do, I do. Sorry. TTA. Right, TTA. Right, TTA. Right, so TTA here would be this one. Uh, what else? Um, what is a suffix of S2 and a prefix of S1? ACT, right? Right, so this one is this tree. Um, what else? What is, um, what is a prefix of S3 and a suffix of S2? Okay, a prefix of S3 and the suffix of S2, basically T, I think. Right? So T should be the largest um, suffix of S2, that's a prefix of S3. And what else? Running out of colors. <laughs> okay. So what is a suffix of S3 that's a prefix of S1, AC? Right, so AC over here, and that's two, right? And okay, I still have an orange. No, I don't have an orange color. Um, gray. <laughs> right. So, what is a suffix of S three that is a prefix of S two? And that one, a TAC, right? So it's actually it's in gray. It's actually a very interesting one, TAAC, right? And that's actually a four, right? Okay, so everybody got the challenge here. So basically what we want to do is to fill this table, right? Okay, questions here? So there was a chat question. The length of the strings must be equal. The, the strings must be equal, right? So I don't get this question. There's a question here from Sene. So Sene, what do you mean? Uh, Sorry, I don't write the question very well. Uh, I was um, wondering that the length of S1 and S, S2 and S3 must be equal? No, actually that's a sort of an unfortunate coincidence, right? They can't have any size, right? So we don't have to have the size of S1 equal the size of S2 equal the size of S3, okay? So this is not a necessary condition, okay? Not a necessary condition. The, it was just an accident on this example, okay? All right. Right? Okay, good question. Thanks. Um, all right, so, so how would we go about finding this information, right? So, so basically, uh, by now, we already know that our first technique is going to be uh, to, 
to build the generalized suffix tree, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the generalized suffix tree of all these strings, right? But then the question is, how do we identify the, um, how do, I do, we, do we identify these strings, right? So let's look at this last example. Let's look here at the, um, at the, um, at the example of the TTIC, right? So I'll basically I'll just copy this down so that I can see it here. Right, so, right, so here, here is our, here's our strings, right? So, so if I build a generalized suffix tree of this string, um, well, first off, okay, these numbers correspond to substrings, right? So if they correspond to substrings, they correspond to nodes on the tree, okay? So, so our, our, our idea is, uh, okay, so I'll just write that. So our idea is to build the generalized suffix tree of this string and then to identify nodes. So let's write that. So first thing to do is build generalized suffix tree of uh, S1 to SK, right? So it doesn't really matter how many we have. So to some SK, right? Uh, okay, second, we want to identify nodes, okay? Identify nodes. Okay, which nodes do we want, we want to identify it, okay? So the nodes must be, they must be uh, a prefix of some SI and the suffix of some SJ, right? So the, we want them to be a prefix of some SI and a suffix of some S, SJ. So we need to, to see, um, so we need to, to find that out in our example over here. Like, okay, so for our example, for our example, okay, what do we have for our example? We have that uh, we want, so for the gray, for the gray case, right? So we want um, for TTAC, right? So for TTAC, okay, we want, uh, that our SI, right? So it needs to be a prefix of SI. So our SI is S2, okay? Uh, not sure where this error comes from, right? And <laughs> this is great. <laughs> and SJ equals S3, right? So basically uh, we want to identify uh, nodes in the tree that correspond simultaneously to prefixes in one string and suffixes in another string, right? Okay, all right. So let's look at our suffix tree and find out if we can identify this information, right? So let's see. So our suffix tree is going to have a root, right? So there's this root. Now, now there are there are going to be a bunch of branches like uh, like for example you have okay so a lot of suffixes start with t okay some t's after the t's have a's okay and something like that some t's after the t oh, sorry not what I meant some tree some t's after the t's have t's right. And some T's after the T's have A's, right? Which is, are the ones that we care about. All right. Some T, some, after some TAs, there are dollars. Like for example, there is like a dollar one here, which we definitely don't care about for our example, but I'm drawing it. 
Uh, right, so it's not on the string because it would confuse us with prefix suffixes because it's like prefix suffixes, but you don't count the terminators, right? But, but here for drawing the generalized suffix tree, I do need the terminator. Um, right, so TA then has a dollar one. Then uh, after TAs, you basically have A's, right? In all cases, you have A's. Okay, actually, after TAs, in all cases, you have ACs, right? So you have AC. Okay, and this is the dollar three. Okay. Okay, so basically, you have TAAC, right? So this is the dollar three, and then we also have a T and a dollar two. All right. Okay. So, um, so how do we know? So the, the node that we are searching for, so the node in our example is this one. So we basically want to identify this node, okay? Why? Because this node is the one that we want, right? So TAAC, right? Uh, and we want to check that it is um, a prefix of S2 and a suffix of S3. So how do we know it's a suffix of um, S3? Okay. Why is it a suffix of S3? Because okay, so one of the labels going from it has dollar three. Right, okay. Um, because uh, ask actually Gusfield has a specific uh, name for this kind of edges, which is called the terminator edge. Okay. Okay, terminator edge. Right. It's a suffix of S3 because it it has got a terminator edge. So what's a terminator edge? Is an edge that just has a terminator. Okay. So that's why it's a suffix. Uh, why is it a suffix of S3? Because it has a terminator edge. It has a terminator edge. I.e. an edge, an edge which contains only one terminator. Okay, um, so not contains only one. Uh, with, it's an edge uh, with a path label, uh, an edge label, sorry, label uh, which is a terminator. Right. Okay. Right. So, so we've got this terminator edge. So this is how I, we identified that it was a suffix of S3. So now, how do we identify that it is a prefix of S2? Okay. So let's put it here. Actually, this is, yeah, I should have drawn this the other way around, but never mind. Uh, right. Why is it a prefix of S2, right? So why is this node a prefix of S2? 
this node over here. Because that sub tree starting there has a leaf of S2. Not has a leaf, okay? Because if it has a leaf, it just basically means that it's a suffix. A leaf with ID one. Right? Sorry? Yes, the leaf with ID one, right? So the ID, if I was to to map the ID of this leaf, okay? So the, the number of this index would be one for S2, right? Okay, so so that's why because because uh, one of its leaves is the suffix one of S two, right? So the suffix one. So this one here is really important. Right, so, or basically the suffix one, or, uh, this means it's the longest suffix. Basically it means that it's S2, right? Uh, of S2, i.e. the longest suffix. Okay, so these are the two ingredients that we need for, um, for our algorithm. So basically what we need to do is we need to identify all of the nodes, okay, that have terminator edges and that that have a descendant, which are the um, these long branches, right? So the one of its leaves is the longest leaf of a given string. Okay, so this is the node that we want to identify. So that's so basically how does the algorithm work? Um, the way the algorithm works is uh, this information, the information of, have, of having terminator edges is stored in stacks. Okay, so, so store this info, store this info in a stack, right? Okay, so the, the information about terminator edges is stored in a stack. The information about um, the longest leaves is um, is obtained when we reach a leaf and we look at its index and we find out that it's uh, index one. Okay, so basically the the, uh, the, um, the the data structure for the algorithm goes like this. Okay, so this store this info in a stack means what? Uh, so the algorithm. Uh, algorithm uses um, k stacks, right? So it's not just one stack. It uses k stacks, right? One for each string sk, si, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so the algorithm goes um, recursively from the top of the stack, from the top of the tree down, and then goes back. So basically in a DFS fashion, right? So uh, the algorithm is essentially a DFS, okay? So it's basically a recursive algorithm. So it goes, from the from one node to its to its to its children, and then uh, from that on, it processes the whole tree. Then it goes back, right? the The algorithm is essentially a DFS, okay? Um, that starts at the root. At the root. Okay. So what do we do? Um, at each node i and at each node v. Okay, so the first thing that we do is first identify all its um, terminator edges, right? So the first thing when you reach a node, you basically look at its terminator edges, uh, all its terminator edges.
okay? For, for each of these edges, push V. So basically you push the node itself into the corresponding stack stack um, uh, SI of SI, right? So basically what I'm saying is that I'm basically going to go down the tree uh, and when I, okay. So, so I, we can do that, right? So is there any string that ends at T? No, there are no strings that end at T, right? So strings end at C's or A's, so that's fine. Right? Uh, sorry, the second string ends at T, no? Right, good, great, thanks. Right, so that means that there should be a terminator here, right? So I wrote that after T's you have C's, but after T's you also have A's, and after T's you also have dollars for the string two. Great, thanks. Right, so so let's 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 um, use our data structure, right? So we, we basically have three stacks, right? So so the stack for string one, okay? So the stack for string one, the stack for string two, and the stack for string three, right? Um, uh, okay, maybe, no, I'll, I'll just do that stuff, right? So stack for string one, stack for string two, and stack for string three. Okay, so I'll, I'll make the stacks, okay, I'll, I'll make the stacks in this direction. So basically, I'm going to push, I'm doing the stacks upside down, right? So I'm going to push this way, and I'm going to pop this way, right? So I'm just going to do the stacks upside down. Everybody got that? Okay. Yes. All right. So, so basically, I have to, to number the... Um, not number, uh, just give names to the nodes, right? So I'll call this node U, I'll call this node V, and I'll call this node W, right? So basically what is the algorithm doing? So it starts here at the roots and then eventually it goes to some other ch children. Uh, actually the roots should be called R and because the root has all the terminators, we should actually include it, right? According to our definition. So it has dollar one, dollar two, and dollar three, right? So it has it has all the terminator nodes, right? So but so so if I start at the root, what I'm saying is that I should basically push the root to each one of these stacks, right? Okay, then I might go to some other nodes, but basically I'll go to this node U, right? And if I know, go to this node U, the first thing I check is that it has a terminator for string two. So basically, I'm going to push node u here in the stack for uh, string two. Then eventually, I'm going to go to the stack. Uh, then eventually, I'm going to go to node v, right? And because node v has a terminator edge for dollar one, that basically means I have to push v into the stack. Okay. And eventually, I'll get to node um, w, right? And because W has a terminator three, that basically means that I have to push W here into the stack, okay? I don't have to recurse into the leaves that correspond to terminator edges. So I can basically skip the recursion for the leaves that are terminator edges because they won't actually add anything. Uh, well, yes and no, right? So it depends if you want to have this diagonal or not, right? So if you want this diagonal of fives, then you have to recurse into the terminator edges. But if you want to ignore these values, or you can just basically compute the string size, the string length a priori, then you basically don't have to do that. All right, so eventually I'll get to this node, right? So eventually I'll get to this leaf, right? So eventually I'll be here. So when I reach this leaf, uh, what happens? Uh, Basically, I find out that I'm in one of these special leaves that have index one, right? And if they have index one, I'll basically report the tops of the strings, right? So, so V, U, and W, 
right? So what am I saying? I'm saying that the, the largest suffixes of S1, S2, and S3, okay? Which are prefixes of, um, of, of S2, right? So these are the prefixes of S2, right? So this should basically be this line, right? So prefixes of S2, so it should be this column. Not this line, this column, right? So, so basically the top of the stacks should be this column over here, right? Maybe. Yeah, so this column. And so when I so when I reach this this node over here, the top of the stacks should be this column. Okay, so basically I know that the U is actually wrong because uh, it's giving me some other prefix of S2 that is actually a suffix, right? So the U is actually the one it's, this is in the diagonal. So the diagonal really doesn't matter. Um, okay, but for S1, I have V, okay? Which is TA, okay? Which is two. And that's the value that we had before, right? And for S3, we have TTA, which is the W. Right? So this one, I don't actually need to report because this one is, this is on the diagonal. So ignore because it's not. It's diagonal. Okay, right. But the idea is that the other two values are correct, right? So the V and the W actually give us the solutions that we wanted, right? Um, and that's basically what we do in our algorithm, right? So at each node V, first identify all of its terminator nodes for each of these edges, push V into the corresponding stack of SI. Uh, now, whenever, whenever a leaf, uh, a leaf, uh, is reached. Okay, whenever a leaf that has index one, okay, uh, or that has index one that corresponds, okay, right, so that has index one, that's fine, is reached. Um, report the top of all stacks except except for DSI of this leaf. Okay, except this one because it's actually a diagonal, right? Um, okay, so everybody got the algorithm? Was this more or less clear? Okay, so the idea here is want to identify these nodes, okay, which are special because they have terminators and they have descendant leaves which are indexed by one, okay? And basically you store the, the um, you store the nodes in stacks whenever a terminator edge is found. And whenever you reach these special leaves, then you just report the top of the stack. Okay. More or less clear. All right, so let's see what's the complexity of this algorithm, right? So the time complexity of this algorithm. Okay. Okay. Time complexity of this algorithm. Okay, so, so we can actually do it here in the in each one of these steps. So, so the first step was to, right, so the first step was way back here where I, where I built the, the, the suffix tree, right? 
So when I built the suffix tree, uh, the first, so I built the suffix tree, right? So that basically takes linear time, right? So N1 plus N2 plus NK. Okay. Now this part of identifying the nodes is also not slower, right? Because what I do is I need to, to create K stacks, all right? Uh, and then I basically go down the tree again. The only problem is here when, uh, whenever an index one is reached, uh, then I report all the stacks, right? So if I report all, all the stacks, this accumulates, right? So accumulates to uh, OK squared time, right? Because if you report all the, the top of the stacks for all of the um, all, for, for all of the the case, right? So it's for each k report all case, so that's k squared, right? So the total time complexity is basically this one, right? So n1 plus n2 plus nk plus k squared, right? So, um, but the big advantage of this algorithm is that. Essentially, the k is being the k squared is being added to the to the to the size of the strings, and it's not being multiplied, right? So if you did this like in a naive way, uh, you could basically multiply k times the the size of the strings, which is not what we wanted, right? We did this on the on the previous algorithm, and because at that point we didn't have a better solution. But for this particular problem, we can actually do better. So this is actually better than the, the other <laughs> algorithm, right? So the other alg alg algorithm is going to be slower when you have large case. Okay. All right, questions. Professor, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, isn't there like a solution in linear time? where we would compute the suffix tree for the, the strings like we did, but we would also compute uh, the suffix trees for the reverse of them. Sorry? So, uh, a, a linear time solution, uh, like doing the suffix trees for the strings like we did, but also for the reverse string. Right. Um, that part over here is already linear time. So, so notice that, um, here, the only extra term that we have is k squared, right? And we actually need this k squared because this k squared is the size of this table, right? So look at this table. This has k squared space, right? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Right? So th this yeah. is actually optimal time right here because you want to build a table uh, and it takes you this time, right? So this is optimal in that sense. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so, so let me see. Um, okay, so let's do one final application of suffix trees and um, now we'll actually do, yeah, okay. So then, yeah, so let's do a final application for today. Uh, and then we'll talk about suffix arrays in the next. Okay, actually, we won't be talking about suffix arrays right away. We'll talk about range minimum series. Okay, so the last, um, the last application that we want to do is to find something uh, called uh, repeats of a string, right? So we want to find maximal repeats and super maximal repeats. Okay, so repeats are basically stuff that appears twice in a string, right? So uh, 7.12, finding maximal repeats, finding all maximal repetitive subtractor. All right, so, so here's an example. 
So suppose you have this string, uh, x, a, b, c, y, a bunch of i's, uh, z, a, b, c, q, a, b, c, uh, y, x, r, x, a, i. All right, so, so what's a repeat? Okay, so re a repeat is any substring that appears twice. Okay, so there's a bunch of definitions here. Okay, so there's repeat. Okay, substring that appears twice. At least two times. Okay, there is maximal repeat. Okay, repeat. Okay, maximal basically means that it cannot be extended. Can not be extended. Okay, and there is super maximal repeat. Super maximal repeat. Not sub. String of a maximal repeat. Okay, All right. So basically, we have this these three definitions. So let's see. Um, right. So for example, here, if I look at the string BC, it occurs twice. Therefore, it's a repeat. Right. So everybody agrees. Okay, so repeat. Okay, it appears twice, it's a repeat. That's fine. Um, now, it's not a maximal repeat. Why is it not a maximal repeat? Because we can have ABC. Because we can extend it to the left, right? If we can extend it to the right, it would also not be a maximal repeat. Okay, so ABC is a maximal repeat, right? Because now if I try to extend uh, ABC, uh, here I ha have a Z and there I have a, an X and here I have a Y and there I have a Q and therefore, um, and therefore, And therefore, it's not uh, a maximal repeat. Okay. Actually, the the notion of maximal repeat um, depends on the position, right? Because it could be that there could be other other positions where you could extend, but it would still be a repeat if on those specific positions you couldn't extend it, right? Um, so there can be uh, different maximal repeats with different sizes. No, actually what can occur is that you can have um, strings that are maximal repeats in some positions, but not on others, right? So for example, here, A, B, C is a max. Okay, so this, this example here is clear, right? So here, A, B, C is a maximal repeat right but here you have actually so yeah so, sorry this, this has all the definitions right so abc is a, re, a maximal repeat but it's not a super maximal repeat right why is it not a super maximal repeat because abc y is also a maximal repeat and abc is a substring of, of abc y Right, so that's that's the definition that I want to give. Okay. Yeah, for example, we have x i and x i. Both of them cannot be extended. Are they a maximal repeat? Yes. Okay, so we have different maximal repeats with different sizes. 
because x is only can says have, yes, two. You can have you can have several maximal repeats, right? So the maximal and we don't have to be those the I, sorry. Those eyes can uh, can be a maximal repeat. Uh, yes, that's true. The eyes are also a maximal repeat. Okay. They can overlap. If the question is, it, can they overlap? Yes, they can. Yes, it was. It, it could have okay. So, for example, here, the double I is also a maximal repeat, right? Because um, here, if I try to extend it to the right, I have a Z, but there I have an I, okay? So I cannot extend it to the right. And to the left, I have a Y, and then I have an I. So this is a maximal repeat. That's true. Okay. All right. So our goal now is to identify the, these things in a suffix tree. So basically, our algorithm is going to be uh, I'm just going to build the suffix tree for this string and uh, try to identify uh, where these the information for these uh, things is. Okay. So the first observation is. Okay, um, the first observation is that, okay, so I, I don't care about repeats, okay? I'm not going to identify repeats. The first observation is that it's, if it's a maximal repeat, it's a node, right? Because if I cannot extend it to the right, that means that there must be two different letters to the right. And if there are two different letters to the right, uh, that means that a node was created. Okay, so maximal repeat implies that it is a node in the suffix tree, right? So repeats, I, we don't care, right? But maximal repeats imply that they are nodes, nodes in the suffix tree. Right? Okay, there are a bit, um, there are a bit, they need to have more information, right? So remember that I, okay, so for example, here for A, B, right? So so my suffix tree is going to look something like this. I have the root, then I have an A, okay? Then uh, I should have a B, okay? And there's a bunch of stuff that I can have after the A. Sorry, not A, B that I, I want to do. I want to have a B and a C, right? So you have a B. Uh, after B's, you okay. So here, after B's, you always have C's, so that's fine. So you have B, C, right? Okay, but then, um, but then there's a node, right? So, so, but then there's a node because you can have B, C's with Y's and you can have B, C's with K's, right? Okay, so this is a node. This could be a maximal repeat, but it isn't right because we noticed that um that we could extend this by adding the letter a before the the bc right so there's this node and there's also this node right so there's going to be a okay and a's are followed by always B's and C's, right, so that's true. Okay, so A's are always followed by B's and C's. Okay. Uh, no, in the end, there's an AR. Okay, thanks. Okay, so there's an A and there's an R. Okay, and then you have ABC's, right? So, and then here you have the same separation. So you can have Q's and you can have Y's, right? So, All right, so, so this node is not a maximal repeat, right? But this node is a maximal repeat, okay? So this is a maximal repeat, okay? And this is not a maximal repeat, even though both of them are nodes, not the maximal repeat, right? So both of them are nodes, 
but this one is a maximal repeat and this one is not a maximal repeat. So you can have nodes that are not maximal repeats. Um, so how do I identify that? So what do I do to identify that? There's a suffix link going from the maximal repeat to the other one. That's, yeah, that's true, but it's not enough. Okay. Do we also have isomorphic subtrees? No. And you also have isomorphic subtrees. You actually do, right? But that's also not enough. Uh, actually, that's close enough. But uh, yes, that would actually. Hmm. Yes, that would actually be enough. But I want. But I want you guys to discover a new idea. Okay. So the idea here is that this is not a maximal repeat because uh, we cannot can add a on both. Okay. We can not add. We can prefix a. Can prefix a on both suffixes. Right, so how do, we, do I know that I can do that, right? Or how do I know that on this case, there are different letters uh, before the ABC, right? So here I have ABC. So basically what happens is that uh, if I go by the queue, I'll go down, I'll reach the terminator. Right, so I'll go down, I'll reach the terminator. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to store after the terminator. What I'm going to store after the terminator is not um, the letters that come after the terminator, but what I want is to know, okay, if I, if I reach the terminator basically be, means I reach the leaf, right? So if I reach a leaf, that basically means that I know which suffix I'm on. And if I know which suffix I'm on, right? I could basically write the number there, but what's important for, for me is to know what's the letter that's before this suffix. And in this case, the letter is Z, right? And we call this letter the left character. Left character, right? Okay, if I do this for both my, for both my, my suffixes, right? So here, right, so, here I have A, B, C, Y, and actually this actually should split in two, right? Where after the Y in one of them, I have an R, and on the other one, I have an I, okay? And if I continue this, okay, and I go down to the terminator, right? I can now add the left characters, right? So, so for the one that goes for the I means that I was here and that means that the left character was an X, right? And for the one that goes for the R means that I was here and the left character was a K, right? Okay, so these are the left characters, right? So what's important about this node? The, the important about this node it, is that the left characters are different or that there are at least two different left characters, right? So this means that this, um, this node over here is left variant, means that it has variation, right? Right, so the, it means that it has different left characters. Uh, and if you do the same thing for this uh, tree over here, right? Actually, the same thing will apply. You have I's and you have R's, okay? Uh, and eventually you get to the nodes. But if you look at the left characters here, um, they are all A's, right? So the left characters are all A, okay? Um, which means that this node over here is not left variant, okay? Not a maximal repeat, not left variant, not left variant, 
Okay. If a node is not left variant, then it's not a maximal leaking. Okay, because uh, you can always extend it using the same method. Okay, and this one is left variant. Okay, to be left variant means that at it has at least two different letters, right? So, so, so this is wrong. But if I wrote an X over here, this would still be left variant, right? So this node is still left variant if I write an X over there, because it has at least two different letters. Okay, uh, it's not left variant in this case when all the letters are the same, right? So this is a Q, but even if it was an X, it would still be left variant. All right, so what do we have now? We're at the end of the class, right? Let me see. Okay, but we have support schedule, right? So that's like, all right, questions? Peter, yeah, um, you you suggested uh, chapter seven point six. What uh, what uh, what's about common substring of more than two strings will appear in the 